Hello, and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council Standing Committee's meeting for Wednesday, October 30th, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin, and I'm the Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, Sean Graham. Due to the length of today's agenda, please go to the Legislative Information Center via the City Council website to read the bills that are up for preliminary approval today. You can find the link in the business dropdown on the city's pittsburghpa.gov website. Please click the Legislative Information Center. From there, you will click the red launch button. This will take you to the council meeting calendar. You will look for today's date and click on the agenda. The meeting agenda will populate with all the bills that are up for discussion and preliminary approval today. Thank you for your patience and understanding and have a wonderful day. Good morning and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council Standing Committee meeting of Wednesday, October 30th, 2019. Our first order of business is public comment. Members of the public, please come forward. You'll be given three minutes. Start off with your name, either address or neighborhood. I would like to choose this up. Well, the green light means the start of, of three minutes. The yellow light means you have one minute to summarize. The red light means your time has expired. Please relinquish the podium. I'd like to use this time to remind everyone that the rules of council state that common is limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are or may be before council. Profanity will not be permitted, and order will be maintained at all times. First speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Yvonne F. Brown. Um, First, I want to send a message to Anton um, Rose's mother, father, family, and friends. No, not, no amount of money will bring him back, but be glad because the money that they're giving to the family is saying that he is of some value. You understand? He was of some value, unlike my son. When my son, I couldn't get an inquest, I asked Mr. Burgess to please write a letter. He tells me to, to, to ask Sean, but he went to different executives and told them when he got elected, I'm here for you. Do you understand? I believe I got no help with my son because you had a black politician who said that we should hire them police after my son was dead. No questions. All I want to do is be able to ask questions. That's all. That's the only way you can get answers. But him, the black man, a reverend, can make the decision that my son wasn't even worth him speaking to me or even writing to the Justice Department, as I said. Another thing I want you to understand, that he's very vindictive. He's a chauvinist, and I'll tell you why. All these papers be here for years. I started passing them out because we were throwing them away. The one lady came, I said, you're speaking. She said, no. She says, I'm part of an organization. I'm getting a proclamation. Okay, so I said, well, you would be in here. And when she read it, she's a dark complected woman, but I could see the color of, uh, left her face. She said, why that dirty dog? Do you know? Even though she was part of the organization, he made sure her name was not on there. She said, I took classes with him. I argued with him. You can't argue with this man. Another thing, I want Sean to take a, a lie detective test. Because when his window broke, he was sitting there. He threw something and broke the window and he put it on Sean. This is a minister. Do you understand? A minister is supposed to be a man of God. I went to different ministers and said, come down here, you need to straighten them out. You know what the one man said? If he won't, one minister said, if he won't listen to you, Miss Brown, what makes you think he'll listen to me? I said, but you are men of God. You're men of God. You, that's what you say you are. But for you, sir, and anybody out there in Homewood that's gonna vote for him, 
please think about Randall Taylor. I met him last night, and he was explaining to me how Krauss put him out. He said, no warning. He said, I looked in any head to search him on him. He can't get over it. He said, I got put out like a criminal. I don't know what's happening down there. When I try to ask, they don't tell you. Just say, get him out. Thank you very much, Mrs. Brown. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Good morning, Dr. Miller. Good morning. Warakushiwa, um, Desu. Dr. Ronald N. Miller, Oakland, American Physical Society Division of Nuclear Physics. I have an MDiv, summa cum laude from Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. GIS candidate for president 2020, globalintelligencesociety.org. Um, I created the CGSII library, and we have collections of the works, complete works of Washington, George Washington, uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, among others, and Albert Einstein in German and in English. Um, it's open to the public, and no CLP branch, including Lawrenceville, Homewood, uh, have these collections. Altered states. We have a problem, I think, with corruption, increase in wrong acts and decrease in right acts. Um, a concern of this council is the linkage of religious and political institutions and individuals in Pittsburgh. I think that's wrong, rupture. Um, I do not share this concern, uh, but it's opposite. Um, the delinkage of religion and politics in our city and country, um, rapture, from my point of view, the right thing. Um, a few facts. One, science is atheistic. The variable, variable of religion uh, or theta for God appears nowhere in science equations. Uh, where is religion in E equals MC squared? Uh, nowhere. Um, for, among hundreds of other equations. For these equations to work, religion and God are irrelevant. Theism, irrelevant. In this sense, our, our children learning science, um, require, it requires that they function as atheists. Um, so it must be a plus since uh, you all think that uh, STEM is really important. Um, and second, um, atheists um, produce only a tiny minority of child abusers, um, and theists, especially Roman Catholic priests, uh, the majority. Yet uh, you people uh, on this council um, do not praise atheists for valuing the sexual sanctity of our kids and you uh, do not pulverize theists who um, destroy, devalue our children. Why? I, I'll tell you why, I think. Because uh, you Democratic Party people need the white Christian religious votes in certain districts, and you need the uh, Roman Catholic especially, and you need the black Christian non-Roman Catholic votes in other districts. Um, to deliver the vote for Democratic Party candidates in the wards. The wards are not neighborhoods. The wards are not, the people who are officials in the wards are not elected by the people. This is to operationalize the vote. Um, it, is a, it is a quid pro quo from my point of view because you can't extort this from atheists or from agnostics. Uh, you know, proclamations, opportunities uh, for invocations and, and other things. This is wrong. Next speaker, please. Good morning, Mr. Ludwig. My name is Les Ludwig, and I live in Squirrel Hill. People have asked me, Les, what are you getting all dressed up for? And I'm trying to figure it out, and it's not easy. Am I getting dressed for a funeral? Or am I getting dressed for a victory party? It's that serious. So we have a president who says that I can walk to the middle of Times Square and kill someone, shoot someone, and that nothing will happen. That's quite some months ago that he made that public statement. So now let's look at what's going on nearby. Is it an accident that ISIS leader gets shot, or is it an opportunity 
for public approval. Um, impeachment. If it fails, will he go the route of earlier presidents and we'll still be stuck with them? He sent all of his senators to break into a private meeting. Cattle, almost on television, it looked like a cattle charge. People who are, are owned, not people who represent. So we come down to two minutes to reflect and ask ourselves the question, are we going to just get up and go and vote Republican because dad did? Or are we going to look at life and look at our grandchildren and what they're going to inherit, God forbid, if this man becomes the president a second time? It's that dangerous. Is it going to be a funeral? Or is it going to be a victory for democracy, at least the form that we've known it, and it needs improvement as well? I thank you for your attention, and I hope that the people out there who are watching television gain some insight from my coming down here all these years trying to present an overview, I thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jennifer Haven. I live at 205 South Pacific Avenue in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm here on my own behalf today. On October 23rd, I came before you and asked that you not vote to approve the city's easement on Eva Street until you see the language of that easement. I also asked that the public be able to see the easement and have an opportunity to review and comment at the public hearing on Monday. These things did not occur, and you voted anyways. At that time, Councilman Burgess's staff stated that the easement would be attached prior to the public hearing. And Councilman Burgess spe stated specifically, when asked by Councilwomen Harris and Kale Smith, whether Council and the people living around the area would have these documents and anything having to do with this legislation, including any attachments, in time to read before the public hearing, he stated yes. This was false. We received the Exhibit A five minutes before the hearing, and it didn't actually contain the easement itself. The purpose of the easement and this is an easement that the city administration required, that was not the interveners, it's to protect the public access to the park. There's no paranoia that the park will not be public. In fact, the city contracted to sell this very park with the same developer in 2015. If the FCG, the BGC, and EPNA, all community organizations in District 9, would not have intervened in the city's lawsuit with the developer it may have well been sold. The easement that I requested still today doesn't exist. I met personally with the Enright Coalition, the attorney for the developer, and the city solicitor yesterday afternoon for two hours in this very building. We made great progress, but the easement is not yet resolved. What else is not yet resolved is the Orphan's Court case that Councilman Burgess falsely stated on October 23rd was final. In fact, it's not final until next month, 30 days after its filing. Most likely, one party or another is going to file an appeal of that order, and you've, your harried and misinformed passing of the legislation is not going to be of any consequence, and that's really a shame. I am not opposed to this development. My group is not opposed to this development. I'm not opposed to this developer. In fact, we worked very closely with this developer directly across the street from this project at the corner of Negley and Penn um, to have the zoning and DPW pass the necessary approvals. We met with the mayor personally on that corner and begged him to approve, that, to approve those um, permits. 
It is not the case that we don't like this developer or we don't like development or we don't like this development. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. Seeing no other speakers, we will now go to the roll call. We ask the clerk, please take the roll. Mr. Cockhill. Mrs. Gross? Here. Mrs. Harris? Here. President Krause? Here. Mr. O'Connor? Here. Mrs. Kel Smith? Here. Mrs. Strasburger? Here. Reverend Burgess? Here. Eight members present. Thank you very much. On request of the um, public safety officials who are in the room, we have the chief here and the director of um, public safety here. We're going to start with Public Safety Services Committee on page 12 in your packet, on page 12 in your packet. Uh, we will start with that committee first, chaired by Councilman Lavelle. We have a new paper. Bill 2202, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of public safety to enter into a grant agreement with FEMA, Department of Homeland Security, to receive a FY 2018 assistance of firefighters grant and further providing for an agreement for the purchase of HALO escape systems and subsequent training for fire bureau personnel. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. 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 Conversation. No conversation. Conversation, Ms. Harris. Yes. Please come forward. <clears throat> I think I really did this morning. Good morning, Director. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Busy week. <laughs> busy week. Uh, Very busy yeah. week. Uh, Wendell Hesrick, uh, Director of Public Safety. Tony Landolina, Assistant Director of Public Safety Administration. Good morning. Good morning. I uh, just wanted to know what the HALO escape system is. That is a rescue escape uh, harness and rope system for firefighters. If they uh, go into a burning building, they get trapped, and they're able to basically bail out of the second or third floor window. Thank you. Near the conversation. Near the conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers and aye. Next bill, please. Bill 2203. Resolution authorizing the mayor and director of public safety to enter into a grant agreement with FEMA, Department of Homeland Security, to receive a FY 2018 fire prevention and safety grant, further providing for an agreement for the purchase of smoke detectors for the deaf. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Conversation. Seeing no conversation, all those in favor, since five by saying aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Next bill, please. Bill 2204. Resolution authorizing the mayor and director of public safety to enter on behalf of the city into a professional services agreement with Axion Enterprise, Inc. to provide body-worn cameras and tasers to the Bureau of Police as well as additional related goods and services at an overall cost $10,910,000. $579 over the course of said agreement. Need a motion. motion to approve need, a, brief need a second. Uh, Mr. Cross? Hi, good morning. Chief, welcome. Good morning. Uh, just very quickly, it's, this is an already budgeted item that we're just passing through, right? That's correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you very much. Happy to support. Ms. Harris. I, I thought the officers were equipped with all this, no? They are. This is an upgrade. Uh, it's more quality, makes it more... Uh, functioning for our officers keeps them safer keeps the public safer so there's a lot of a lot of benefits to okay, sure. to this new upgrade if i may we've we've had numerous uh, since we've through the chief and his administration we've had numerous occurrences where the body worn camera has proven uh, success uh, in defense of the officer and also as a protection for the community, the citizens and residents. Um, what you capture, what individuals capture on a cell phone may only be a small snippet of what actually happened. And with this new technology, it will be activated if they pull their weapon, if they pull the taser, if they activate the emergency lights. Uh, in times of stress, sometimes uh, the officer is thinking about focused on the threat does not have the opportunity to activate the body-worn camera or may not, be, may not think about it. Uh, the new technology will allow that to be basically automatic if they feel in danger for their lives. Hey, if they don't pull um, any of those, will it still go yes, on? Yes, okay. they manually activate it. Okay, thank you. Any other conversation? Yes. Mr. Cargill. Just curious, what's the shelf life of a camera like that? Is it two years, five years? So the, uh, the, the contract is uh, five years. So over the life of the contract, 
if technology improves, right. we'll benefit from that as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, uh, I also want to add to the chief here. I met Commander Zet yesterday, my new commander, and, and I love her. She's great. And, Very uh, good. You know, we've got the safest neighborhoods in the city, and I think she's committed to that. So thanks. thanks. Any other conversation? Ms. Uh, Gross. Thank you. Um, actually, I just want to note um, that we should follow up probably at another time. When we started this budgeting and, and adopting the, the body cameras, we had several concerns at council, and I feel like the, we and the public should get updated, but not today. Um, we were worried about storage, data storage, um, the capacity and the cost. Uh, we're worried about kind of the policies around how long we keep those footage and the, again the kind of capacity and the cost and also about the kind of cybersecurity aspects I think and that's what I'm recalling as we were kind of sitting here in budget hearings so maybe maybe in our upcoming council briefing or in budget hearings it would be good to get an update on now that we've had it in place for some time are there places where you are concerned about it if, if it's there are obstacles or burdens i think council would be interested in hearing about them so uh, councilwoman just touch on that this new program this new um, contract will provide us unlimited storage where prior we were paying per gig the gigabyte. cost of storage was part of the concern and i know council yes. Cockle and i are and uh, like to try to keep an eye on our data services costs and this is one of the advantage of going with this new contract is it will provide us unlimited storage thank you anyone else for first round no one else for first round starting the second round miss Harris yes uh, do you have any type of camera to use on a K-9 sometimes they go first uh, that technology is being developed and I don't know if that's in the contract or not but uh, we are with this contract all the officers including the canine officers not the canines themselves will have the camera and that is very important but uh, the new technology is uh, cameras for canines and uh, we are looking into that there are some concerns on that as well I mean it's uh, um, as councilwoman gross uh, mentioned you have to be there's a, certain times you're not allowed to use the camera and we have to make sure that uh, we have a control on that as well I'll ask you why later. Okay. Any other conversation? See no conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. Thank, Thank you, you very much, gentlemen, for Thank your participation you. in council. Thank you. That takes us back to the front of the agenda, Finance and Law Committee, of which I am the chair. We have a supplemental paper. Bill 2228, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of finance to execute an agreement of sale and all related documents necessary to effect the purchase of the city of Pittsburgh in lieu of taken by eminent domain 410 Matthews Avenue in the 30th Ward and to accept a deed for the property, further authorizing the expenditure of funds <coughs> for the purchase, closing, and other associated auxiliary costs. Need a motion. A motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? Brief. Miss brief conversation. If I may, just 30 seconds or less. Uh, this, this is uh, so we can uh, uh, finalize the development for the master plan for the new fourth division public works facility. Uh, the other conversation. Could, couldn't have said it better, and I wanted to thank uh, our president, uh, Councilman Krause, and uh, Councilwoman Teresa Kill Smith for working on this. This was really important. I mean, this house sat right in the middle of where the development was, and there was the option to kind of build around it, which we were going to do. But um, yeah. yeah, I'm really glad. I mean, they were trying to come to a consensus with this property for years, and uh, finally, um, it's perfect. So yeah. thanks for your cooperation. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Thank you, Ms. Smith. I just want to thank and congratulate uh, Councilman Coghill and uh, Councilman Krause on their work on this and with the administration, because really, this was something that you really went in and you wanted to make sure this happened. I was supportive because it was it was really affecting District 2 mm -hmm. and Division 5 and the 5th Division. And so um, we can't wait for it to be open so that everything go back to at least some sense of normality um, mm -hmm. for both of our divisions. Thank you very much. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. We have a deferred paper. Mm -hmm. Bill 2136, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $47,000 in favor of Daniel Alderman and his attorneys in full and final settlement of a litigation filed in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. In a motion. Motion to approve. Is second. Second. Conversation, Ms. Harris. Do we have any attorneys here? Executive session. We used to held. know what they looked like. 
It was a executive session held on the 24th. Okay, it didn't say that. Yeah, it was executive session. Yes, it All right, thank you very Where? much. All it doesn't those say it on hers. It doesn't, doesn't say it. It doesn't say it on yours? No. It does That's say it on mine. All those. Very in, odd. All, sorry about that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed his name. Next bill, please. Bill 2193. Resolution amending Resolution 879, which authorizes the Director of Finance to enter into an agreement with City Source Associates for groundskeeping and land maintenance services for properties owned by the three taxing bodies by exercising the right to renew for one year at an additional cost of $250,000. Motion to approve. Need a second. 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 Conversation. Any conversation? No? no. Yes? No? All those, in fa all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. Oh, Next wait. bill, please. Bill 2194. Was that city resolution. Uh, amending resolution is, yes. 497. I'm which a, I'm provided. Abstain from that. I apologize. Sorry. I'm going to abstain from that. So noted. Resolution amending resolution 497, which provided for a professional services agreement with Collector Solutions, now NCR Corporation, to provide citywide credit, debit, and e check payment services for the collections of various program and permitting fees for the city by exercising the option to extend the term of the agreement for one year and an additional costs past the original, not to exceed $30,000, and updating the name of the vendor. Motion to I'm sorry. Yeah. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Conversation? No conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. Next bill, please. Bill 2195. Resolution providing for the conveyance by the city of certain property having been placed for sale to adjourning property owners in conjunction with the city of Pittsburgh side yard program item A through P. 5301 Broad, 5305 Broad, 6919 Kenron, 7289 Lemington, 7730 Flory, 0 McNeely, 522 Wilco, 1924, 1922, 1920, and 19, uh, 1920 St. Eve's, 1028 Lamont and 1027 Lamont, 1908 and 1906 St. Eve's, 846 Phoenix, 815 uh, Lowry, 17, 815 through 17, Lowry. Right. Uh, Motion to approve. Second. Any second. Any conversation? Ms. Harris. Yes, I haven't received the information yet on uh, P. Oh. Yeah. They were the last ones. So what, which bill are you on? 2195. Okay. On the trying to find it. Let me try to yeah. go by the front one here. Okay. Uh, motion to delete uh, O and P until I get the information. There, there's a motion to delete um, letters O and P. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. It takes us back to the original bill. Any conversation about the original bill? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed is nay. Um, we will go to the next bill, please. <laughs> bill 2196. Resolution providing for the sale of certain property acquired by the city of tax sales items A through E. 1200 Spring Garden, 1206. Spring Garden 1204 and 1208 Spring Garden, 1815 Rialto, Rialto. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Need a second. 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 Our uh, conversation, Ms. Harris. Yes, I have a motion to delete. Motion to delete uh, A through E. Everyone? Till I get the information. All of them. So you want to? I want to leave the bill because I might have the, the information by Tuesday. Uh, but I want to so would you, delete the items you right can't, now. You can't quite do that. If you delete the items, there'll be nothing. You'd have to. 
What you really want to do is one of two things. You either want to hold the bill for a week or you can vote against it and then recommit it on next Tuesday. I think that's the most, either one of those will be more prudent than taking them out completely and then trying to put them back on Monday. Which one do you want to do? Uh, maybe I should table it until I get the information. I can untable it. To table Why don't you just hold it for a period of time and you can always do something more severe. Okay, motion to hold. How one long? week. One week, second. Okay, second. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Hold it for one week. Uh, we need to vote on it. We all those in favor, send five by saying aye. Aye. Opposed was nay. All right, that takes us to Bill 2198 and 21 on yeah, page. Another, I missed one. All right, there's another page one. Six. Page six. Thank you. Bill 2197, resolution repealing items in resolutions approved on various dates, which authorizes sale of property in various wards of the city due to an incompletion of sales items A through C. 714 Naylor, 218 Hellock, 1710 Manhattan. Um, need a motion. Motion to approve. I need a second. Any conversation about this? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed is nay. You can read 2198 and 2199 together, please. Bill 2198, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $25,212.50 to Con Ferry for professional services rendered in connection with labor arbitrations. Bill number 2199, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into a professional service agreement with Seagal Waters Consulting for professional services rendered in connection with labor arbitrations in an amount not to exceed $52,538.75. There's a mo I need a motion to hold for executive session. Motion to hold for executive session. I need second. a second. All those in favor, since five by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, there's nay. There are more bills in this committee. I will come back to it because I'm going to have conversation, mm -hmm. but I want to move through some of the other bills mm -hmm. that we can just dispose of. May I just briefly then? Sure. Uh, Madam Clerk, I may not be here when these bills are uh, read. Uh, 22, 13, 14, and 15. May I be added as co sponsor, please? So, no. thank you. I mean, we can do it now if you want. It's, I'm just going get, to get, get, get through some of the other bills. All right, we have the invoices. Motion to approve. Need a second? second. Mr. Discussion, sorry. Discussion on the invoices. Mr. O'Connor. Um, under finance, there is a let's cut a deal services, so I have to abstain on the invoices. I talked to uh, Bill Urbanic. <laughs> Um, the address there is my mother's house, but there's no tree that was taken, so I don't really know. There's a public right of way, what about your and I just have to abstain. That's my address, so I don't know why it's on there. I don't know of any of the work, so I'm just going to abstain on the invoices. So we have uh, a motion to approve. Sense. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, abstentions. Aye. One opposed, Miss Harris opposes. Oh, no, abstained. you're abstaining. Didn't, didn't know which one. All right, that then uh, takes us as I move slowly through my agenda. There's that takes us to P cards. There's no interdepartmental transfers. There are P cards on the table. Need a motion for the P cards. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. All those in favor of the P cards. All in favor of signify by saying aye. Opposed is nay. All right, that takes us to the Public Works Committee, which Mrs. Harris, Mrs. Kel Smith, rather, so. is the chair. We have a supplemental paper. Bill 2233, resolution amending resolution 665, providing for an agreement associated with the East Carson Street Supplemental Improvement Project by providing for certain contributions to be made by the city through separate legislative appropriations in a subsequent year in an amount not to exceed. $886,162.99. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Ms. Smith, is in your committee. Oh, I'm, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I was talking to Councilman Cross. Which one is it? First one. It is first bill, 2233. Page 12. Page 12, I'm sorry. I'm okay. I, no, I apologize. We're getting Darren Kelly's proclamation ready. Yes, sorry. I, I know, we were doing that too. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, I'm good. This is Councilman Krause's district. What is it? Uh, is, I don't know. Is there anyone here from Public Works? Do you want to keep it open and, 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 and yeah. invite someone it's to come? It's the work that PennDOT's doing now. PennDOT's doing parcel. What yeah. work are they doing? It's PennDOT. It's PennDOT pen on East Carson they're Street. Doing new, they're doing piping and pipes. They're doing sidewalks and all kinds of stuff. 
So what is your pleasure, Council? If Pentod is doing it, I'd just like to find out so do you why want, we're paying. So do you want to hold, hold it, it open? until somebody comes to the table. Okay, if you could, if the clerk could um, ask someone from Public Works to come to explain the bill, that's... It would be Domi. Huh? Domi, not Public. She, yes. she was, we're saying? on the pin dot piece. Yes, please. You want to explain? Yes. 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 Do you mind? Just, so... I'm getting up there. Um, we've been delayed a couple times now. About two years ago, maybe a little bit less, this council approved uh, the additional funds needed to make certain that all of the traffic signals and the new lights and the highway signage was elevated to a higher standard that they weren't the galvanized, but that they weren't the black. Director, are you here for this? No. Okay. Pin dot. And so Carson Street. There's been a minor cost overrun. It's gone back and forth to attorneys a bunch of different times. It has finally been settled. This is for uh, the additional dollars for the cost overrun that will permit us to finally begin the project. Am I basically correct, Director? Uh, yeah. So, okay. Karina Ricks, the Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. So, this is the uh, routine agreement that we have with PennDOT for reimbursement agreements. So. Um, as the project proceeds, um, uh, uh, we get uh, better and better estimates of the, the local contribution costs, um, and this will, would cover those local contribution co costs that are necessary for the project. Right. Thank you. It's, mm -hmm. This has been an amazing amount of work, um, and it's taken a number of years to assemble, and uh, we're... Um, we're very anxious to launch the project. Yeah, so it's, a, it's something on the order of a $14 million investment that will happen on the corridor. Yeah, yeah. and the, it will take place from Station Square uh, through, uh, I think it's 33rd Street where Sarah and Carson right. intersect. So it's a major rebuild of the road. Everything designed uh, to increase safety on the street, whether that be pedestrian, vehicular, bicycle, or public. Any other conversation, <laughs> Ms. Harris? Okay. Was this all to be paid by PennDOT and we're just paying it ahead of time? Or is this part of what we owe to have that done? So for every project that we sure. uh, do with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, there are almost always local uh, contribution want, costs. So for that. example, to bring um, ADA accessible ramps uh, back to current standards. That's a local contribution cost that's necessary on our side um, to ensure that the that the signals are uh, powder coated black um, so that they fit in with the context of the city. That's something that is a is a cost that we need to cover because the the uh, PennDOT typical um, arrangement is just the gunmetal steel. Um, that you find in other places. Uh, pedestrian, to have the pedestrian push buttons in the appropriate places, again, for ADA accessibility. Um, this is something that we need to cover. So there's a range of items um, that are not covered by the uh, PennDOT standard project um, that we require because of the urban nature of our streets. So this covers those uh, extra costs. Thank you. Any other conversation? Yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. Gross. <laughs> it's distracted. I don't know what's going on back yes, there. But yeah. Yes. Um, so I just want to wish you well because we had know, both the Penn Avenue you. reconstruction in my district when I was first elected. It would have been intended for 12 years and was finally happening. And it did not go well with the subcontractors and the construction management was um, dangerous to you know the residents and um, prolonged and involved people suing each other and it was not fun. So hopefully that won't happen. And then secondly, the um, not reconstruction, but really even just repaving on Butler Street, which involved also some new traffic signalization, um, left residents very unhappy. We had to, we really struggled. It sounds like you're doing up front what we ended up doing after the fact because PennDOT didn't give us warning. Um, we did, had to do a 30 block walkthrough to correct where they were intending to put the curb cuts for the ADA ramps in places that were not ADA friendly at all. Um, and so it was a, a lot of work on my offices, uh, a lot of, you know, and the community organizations. 
um, plate to to make sure that that was an improved plan. So again, kudos for doing it up front. And I hope that um, that can you speak to the? I know that the director and I have talked about these traffic signalization poles. That you know, I don't know if you all remember, but the people of Lawrenceville remember the one that they labeled the Festivus pole because it was so badly placed on a very narrow sidewalk in front of a shop and really almost at the top of an ADA ramp, so it was almost impossible to access the ramp. Um, and then the robotic control signalization that went along with it. These boxes aren't little boxes. I mean, the boxes are like as big as Huge. me. Mm -hmm. And it was first placed in front of, again, a shop front door. So we had to have it moved across the street. So the whole thing is quite the rigmarole. Can you speak especially to these, what I consider highway-sized poles with their robotic boxes? So the traffic control boxes are uh, necessary just to, to make sure that we're able to time the signals appropriately if there's ever the need for um, public safety or others to operate the signals and take over manual control. That's the, those uh, traffic control boxes they are, are getting bigger. They are larger, and uh, those boxes are quite full of equipment. So with more and more technology, with more and more utility that we're putting on, uh, our traffic poles, um, we are seeing more and more needing to be fit into those traffic control boxes. So um, they are sizable. They're, 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 they're the size of a, of a refrigerator out yeah. uh, mm -hmm. on the sidewalk. Um, but they are necessary to do everything that we uh, call on from our traffic signals and from the other controls. In the so you have to be careful that you have a plan for where those go. They because are. the sidewalks on Butler Street are very small. They're That's way undersized for the amount of pedestrian activity that you have. That's correct. And, and the councilman maybe uh, mentioned or, or didn't mention that curb extensions um, are occurring at a great number of the intersections on Carson Street. Obviously, Carson Street is a highly pedestrianized area. Uh, and so putting those curb extensions uh, should enable us to get those poles out of the flow of traffic so that the pedestrian clear zone remains clear. Um, these traffic poles are hefty. Uh, they, they They're sized for, you know, McKnight Road. Yeah, and again, and this is not McKnight Road. Yeah, this is a, this is a state standard. You're not a mile away going 55 miles an hour. This is so. a state standard that has to do with wind loads and steel uh, fatigue and a number of other factors that uh, go into making sure that those um, poles meet the, the statewide standards. We are working with PennDOT, and I, and I uh, do uh, think that PennDOT deserves a vote of confidence from us that they have really, at our urging, in part because of what happened on uh, Butler Street, PennDOT is uh, working with us to uh, adapt their... Have an uh, urban standard that's different to than a more a urban, right? So to see if we can bring the girth of those poles down, because mm -hmm. we have such tight uh, sidewalk um, uh, dimensions. Absolutely. I mean, to to sit with PennDOT officials, some of whom are lovely people, but have them. Oh wait. But to have them refer to Butler Street as a highway 30 times in a meeting is just distressing, right? And so. We really need to, and I've questioned before, and council members will remember me questioning why we dedicate roads to PennDOT. Um, and we've had this discussion offline, so I won't bring it up today, but right. I wish you well, Councilman. <laughs> May I make a suggestion? Uh, I would love to take a walk. Uh, yeah. And Councilman, or Councilman, perhaps you'll join us. Yes. Uh, and, and we'll walk the district. Just It can hurt to just cross our I's and mm -hmm. dot our T's or that's a great idea. Way. I'd be happy to. Great, Absolutely. thank you. We can, and and, yeah. uh, and that's something that we may need to do over and over again. As you uh, all know, and, and we all know too well, uh, as uh, events of late, there's a lot of utilities under our streets, um, and so uh, finding thank enough you. clear space for uh, the foundations, which are quite large. Yeah, but Butler Street also. These are, are old, uh, hardworking streets, and the hardworking infrastructure underneath them um, do introduce additional constraints in the location of the pole. So as we go, uh, as PennDOT, this is a PennDOT project, as PennDOT goes uh, to each and every intersection, they will they will mark with spray paint where um, the foundations are uh, meant to go, and that's the that would be a great time as they take on each new intersection um, to look and see where those locations are being marked and confirm um, that this is the best that we can do given the number of constraints that are under there. Yeah, 10 to, to, 10 to 17 brings its own set of problems. Uh, Smithfield to 10 brings its own set of problems. Uh, 18 to 33, there's a little more flexibility in there. So I, join us, let's, let's take a walk. 
Thank you. Appreciate Mo it. Thanks, Director. Motion to approve on the table. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Close this name. Next Thanks bill, please. Everybody. Bill 1909. Thank you, Ordinance supplementing the Pittsburgh City Code, Title I, Administrative Chapter 156, creating a clean sweep division with the Department of Public Works in order to oversee and improve the maintenance of vacant city owned properties and formalize the status of the division. Need a motion? Motion to approve. Need a second. second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers, nay. Aye, 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 Next bill, please. Bill 2207, resolution oh, taking, appropriating and condemning by the city for public roadway purposes certain property in the 18th Ward owned by 2826 Edwards Way and Associates LLC, known as 322 and 324 Arlington Avenue, authorizing the payment of just compensation and necessary and incidental acquisition costs related thereto. I need a motion. A to motion hold. To, oh, wait. Uh, no, it oh, we already held. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was to hold. Is there a second? Yeah, motion to approve. This is Arlington Avenue. This is your district. Mm -hmm. Santa Party. Yeah, we are good. Thank you. Good. Okay. Any other conversation? You didn't get a second. Is there a second? She they both said they both made motions. <laughs> Neither one made a second. Yeah, right. I was just going second. to incorporate. Motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, there's nay. Thank you very much. Next bill, next committee is the Land Use and Economic Development Committee. Uh, we have deferred papers. Human resources. Human resources. Did I skip it? Page 13. Yeah. Human resources committee. Ms. Harris is the chair. Bill 2200. Resolution providing for the authorization to make all legitimate expenditures for payments and agreements with various agencies for job development and employment services necessary to implement the 2019 Neighborhood Employment Program and providing the periodic transfer of funds <coughs> to be used in the 2019 Neighborhood Employment Program for payment of costs not to exceed $150,000. Read the next bill, too. Bill 2201, resolution providing the authorization to make all legitimate expenditures for payments and agreement with various agencies to provide job development and employment services, wages, and friends, French benefits for supervisors, staff, workers' compensation, unemployment compensation, vocational skills training, and on the job training, outreach, recruitment costs, and administrative expenditures necessary to implement the 2019 Pittsburgh. Partnership Employment Program and providing the periodic transfer of funds to be used in the 2019 <laughs> Pittsburgh Partnership Employment Program and for payment of costs thereof, not to exceed $150,000. The annual bill, I need a motion for the two bills. Motion to approve. Is there a second? second? Any with discussion. discussion with Mrs. Smith has the table. Good morning, everyone. You want to morning. introduce yourself for the public, and then I just have a simple question. I feel bad all three of you came to the table. That's okay. Good Sorry. morning. Janet Manuel, Director of Human Resources and Civil Service. Deidre Cochran, Senior HR Manager for the Pittsburgh Partnership. And Chris Barnes with the Pittsburgh Partnership. Thank you. I just want to first thank Deidre. She's been amazing trying to help us get our employment center back up and running and on our side of town, and um, we've had one hurdle after another. But I wanted to know, so... We have not spent our money for two years on our employment center, right. and I wonder what happens to that funding because it should it was allocated for our area, and since it wasn't utilized for our area, I mean, does it stay, does it remain, or do you reallocate to something else, and, and how does that process work? Um, we actually save it for up to two years. Um, we have okay. last year's money, and we have this year's money okay. set aside for that. Uh, once two years goes by, um, we are in jeopardy of that money being reallocated somewhere else. Um, so we will spread that around the other neighborhood employment centers if it's not used. Okay, but right so, now so we, we want to use it. Correct? Yes, correct. And so uh, we, last week we did all the paperwork that we need to do legislatively for the additional funding that I was putting in. Okay. And we have, I think we have everything in place now. Is that correct? Um, we I'm have still... furniture that's the city's helping to donate. We mm -hmm. have, um, we have Scott Albert is the person who's supposed to be opening this at Trinity Church. Mm -hmm. Is is that all? Do you know the status of it? I think everything. It's actually on my list to talk to my staff about today. Okay. I wanted to know the status of it, but if, uh, if I don't want to put you on the spot, so if you know offhand the status, great. If not, we'll follow up later. Okay. I'm still waiting to hear back from the company from Building for Bridges. 
for the, to, to, to complete. serve as their conduit. Right, okay. right. So as soon as we I hear back from them, then we're ready to so go. So if we don't have Building for Bridges, is there someone else we could use, or do I have to still find another nonprofit? We would have to we find, find another, another nonprofit. Another I wonder if we could use Poise Foundation um, for something like this. So maybe we can talk about that, because I just want to get it up and running. I mean, we've been trying to get it up and running for a couple of years now, and it's it's been a battle, one thing after another. And, and I mean... I never thought politics played so much into employment centers, but it obviously did. But I want to thank you very much for your work. Oh, you're welcome. So thank amazing you. and so helpful. So it's, she's been great. <laughs> for these annual bills, is there any more conversation? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. Uh, that exhausts that committee. I'm going to go back now. Thank you very much to thank the you. Finance and Law Committee and have uh, a conversation. Um, there are three bills um, um, underneath that left and that. Uh, 2013, 2014, 2015. You can read them together. You can read them together. Bill 2213, resolution establishing the city, all in cities leadership forum. Bill number 2214, resolution recognizing racism as a public health crisis. Bill number 2215, resolution establishing the all in cities investment fund. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second, second if you defer. I want to um, begin to have this conversation in a very public way. After this, I'm going to let other members of council share, and then we will hold. My intention is to hold for um, probably a post agenda and public hearing. But I, I want to lay out, if you would indulge me, my thoughts on this issue and um, share with council some of the research we've done, so at least we can begin the conversation. Right, and um, from the onset, I am I am grateful for my partnership um, on council and council uh, president Her president crosses ra rather uh, willingness to to co-sponsor with me and, and, and councilman lavelle and so um i'll share you yeah. i'll share with you um sort of uh, my views um i was born and raised here in pittsburgh i spent all my professional life working as a pastor professor and politician here in my hometown i was married here and i've raised my children here I am a Pittsburgher through and through. I bleed black and gold. Yet, numerous reports have documented the fact that Pittsburgh has a problem with institutional racism and its devastating effects upon its African American residents. Despite this fact, I still love my city. I also believe with all my heart that Pittsburgh is greater than racism. In order to gain clarity, first we need an accurate understanding of racism. Racism is often viewed as an action performed by individuals. Even if we got rid of all of America's prejudiced individuals, racism would still exist in the systems they built. Systematic racism, writer Janae Desmond Harris explains, refers to how racial disparities operate in major parts of US society, the economy, politics, education, and more. Racism, in other words, isn't just someone using a racial slur. It's also the poor schooling in predominantly black and brown neighborhoods, the racial wealth gap, housing discrimination, mass incarceration, police killing of unarmed black and brown people, higher infant mortality rates for people of color, and unequal access to health care. It's becoming apparent that racism is a health crisis in the United States. Systematic racism is embedded in society and has a detrimental effect on the lives and health out outcomes of people of color. Those who experience racial discrimination are more likely to suffer from chronic diseases and premature death. These health-related issues interact with and are reinforced by other products of systematic racism, such as income inequality, educational disparities, housing discrimination, mass incarceration, violence, and unequal access to health care. Racism is a public health crisis because it risks the health and well-being of all citizens and causes destruction at a social and economic level. National publications are now documenting the danger of racism. The Southern, Paul Law, the Southern Poverty Law Center, in an article of July 19, 2019, entitled Racism is Killing African American State, racism affects every aspect of American life, none more so than our medical system. Numerous studies over the years have laid bare the gap in health outcomes between minority groups and white Americans. African Americans have a lower life expectancy than white people. They are more likely to suffer and die from chronic conditions like kidney, cardiovascular, and lung diseases. Black children are more likely to suffer from asthma 
and have more severe symptoms than white children. The infant mortality rate is more than twice as high for black children than for white children, a disparity that's wider today than it was in 1850 when the majority of African Americans were still enslaved, and one that is not related to the economic or educational status of the mother. These persistent disparities in health outcomes are not due to genetic or biological differences between the races, but to entrenched racism in American society. In addition, the Center for American Progress, in an article April 18, 2018, titled Racism, the Evergreen Toxin Killing Black Mothers and Infants State, Racism, an Evergreen Toxin in American Society, has long served as the primary ingredient of racial inequality. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Kerner Commission, a bipartisan group created by former President Lyndon B. Johnson to investigate the country's seamless, endless civil unrest. The Commission's final report identified white racism as the main source of unrest in communities across the country. Their Commission stated in no uncertain terms that our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. Fifty years later, the United States has yet to sufficiently take on the toxin of racism. Current data reveal that it not only continues to divide communities and promote unrest, but the daily to exposure of racism is literally killing black women and infants. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, in August of this year, racism has a devastating effect on the children's health. The nation's largest group of pediatricians warned this week that racism can have a devastating long-term effect on children's health. A policy statement from the American Academy of Pediatrics is the first it has issued to its members on the dangers of racism. Doctors involved in the report say that the current political and cultural atmosphere makes the work more urgent. Pediatricians welcomed the report, which drew on 180 key studies and included specific recommendations, say that the danger to their patients has become acute. There was a time not too long ago under a different president when I think we as a society were talking about living in a post-racial age. That's changed pretty dramatically, said Nigel J. Hurd Garris, a pediatrician at Northwestern University. It's a new age of racism. Finally, racism is killing African Americans here in Pittsburgh and is an immediate public health crisis. America's most livable city is also the least livable city for African Americans. America's most livable city is simultaneously <clears throat> the least livable city for African Americans. Recently, the city's Pitch Pittsburgh Gender Equity Commission issued a report titled Pittsburgh's Inequality Across Gender and Race. According to its findings, Pittsburgh black residents could move to almost any other U.S. city of comparable size and have a better quality of life. The report found that compared to those in similar cities, black women in Pittsburgh face higher rates of maternal mortality and poverty, along with lower rates of employment and college readiness. Black men face higher rates of occupational segregation, homicides, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. In subsequent interviews, Juanita Howe, a University of Pittsburgh sociologist who worked on the report said, our report empirically validated that Pittsburgh's racism is not only alive and well, but more extreme than most other cities. Earlier this year, I'm proud that this city of Pittsburgh, along with this council, passed legislation declaring itself an all-in city. Department heads will soon have to submit reports de detailing how their budgetary decisions further equity within city government and an internal equity implementation team is being established. Moreover, City Council has now created and filled a full-time equity policy analyst position, uh, Carrie Ware Seaburn, who's helped me today, who helps to shepherd this work throughout city government and also engages with the public, including the All-In Coalition. This work is being fast-tracked as the city is now receiving training from GARE, Government Alliance on Race and Equity, to better embed racial equity within city government operations and decision-making. As an All-In City, we, City Council and the Mayor's Office, will continue the work of racial justice, equity, and inclusion. Again, I am proud of our work at Council. We will continue to coordinate government activities as the city and its authorities implement the five-point agenda in the equitable development, the path to an all-in Pittsburgh report. Five strategies. One, raise the bar for new development. Two, make all neighborhoods healthy communities of opportunity. Three, 
expand employment and business opportunities. Four, embed racial equity throughout Pittsburgh's institution and businesses. Five, build community power, voice, and capacity. But for Pittsburgh to be a livable city for everybody, we must come together and continue to prioritize racial justice and racial reconciliation. So today we began the conversation about three more additional pieces of racial justice legislation as part of the all-in cities agenda. They are one, declaring a racism a public health crisis here in Pittsburgh. Two, establishing an all-in cities leadership council to coordinate the city's response to this crisis. Three, establishing an all-in cities capital fund to reduce racism's harmful effect in Pittsburgh's African American communities. It's in conclusion, it's clear that racism is a public health crisis in the United States and an immediate and urgent crisis here in Pittsburgh. But I believe our country is greater than racism. I believe our city is greater than racism. I believe this city council and our mayor for sure is greater than racism. So following the lead of Milwaukee and Madison, Wisconsin, we can become one of the first cities in the country to declare racism as a public health crisis. With the passage eventually of these proposed legislation, we will continue to publicly confront racism as a public health crisis, coordinate the city's responses to the problem of racism, and commit sufficient resources to, er to eradicate racism. We as a council have been progressive. We as a city, um, I believe that our mayor had, and this council has done everything we can. Um, but as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, the prescription for the cure rests with an accurate diagnosis of the disease. And so I believe that making this proclamation, a lot of the, le the, le the living experiences of African Americans in our city becomes validated and, and worth. And so I will, I will stop chatting, chatting at the end of this conversation, though I will hold. Um, I want the public to weigh in and have an opportunity to react, but I wanted to, and I thank you for your indulgence. I simply want to lay down a sort of academic and, and, and thought provoking um, understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about modern day racism. Conversation. Ms. Gross. Uh, thank you, I just wanted to make sure, I, council members might not have gotten the written copy of the Gender Equity um, Commission, so I'll, I'll try to make sure that you get the written copies as well. I've spoken to it, uh, many of you about it, um, and um, certainly I'm sure you've seen the media and know that we're continuing deep conversations, especially with African-American women leadership in the city. Um, we've had a number of meetings convened by community members. We've gone out to Homewood several times, um, Larimer, I think, as well. And uh, New Voices Pittsburgh has been a good organizer around pulling in a lot of um, community participants into the conversation. There was, I think, some concern. There was some, some strong concern that the project not end with just a litany of symptoms, as you were saying, right? That we move towards policy and action. Um, and I believe the time for action is now. Um, and so I want to say it is truly distressing that especially the African American women in the city of Pittsburgh having such dire differences to other categories of our citizens in terms of infant mortality, maternal mortality, life expectancy, and as the councilman said, poverty. We need to be sure that the things that we do, every of the things, all of the things that we do, each of the things that we do here in council are not exacerbating this problem. Um, so every budget line, every kind of operation that we do, we can at least make sure that we're not doing more harm. Uh, because what we're doing is, is clearly been, I've been here five years now, we've, it doesn't seem like we've made it better. Um, so we continue to strive and struggle, but we really do need our citizens' input to, to, to let us know whether the things we're doing are helping and to give us their voice um, so that we can do better. So thank you, Councilman. Thank you very much. Ms. Smith. I just want to say pretty much what uh, Councilman Gross had said, um, that we're making sure that we include um, not just the, le the leadership um, in the African-American community of the female community, but I want to make sure that we're including all people and that they all have a chance, especially the African-American females in the city. Because the, oftentimes the reason why um, they're experiencing some of the things they're experiencing is because somebody in a leadership role made some decision or determined something that maybe that's not exactly, just like we don't, as white women, um, we don't all have 
one leader or one person. We can all speak for ourselves. I feel like African American women would like to have the opportunity to speak for themselves as well. And I mean, collectively and individually. And so I just think make sure we have make that opportunity available for everyone. That's all. Thank you very much. Any other conversation? Ms. Harris. Yes, I'd just like to say that I do not want to see anyone going through the falling through the cracks uh, uh, on the racism. Uh, a lot of this is, is superior uh, you for your to another. And um, it, it bothers me that, yes, there are people that still have hatred in them. Uh, I don't see that happening on council. I don't see anything that we have passed or haven't passed that has hurt anyone, uh, particularly those that live in poverty and, um, and, and, and it's more than just one race. Uh, so I look at the poverty of how one has lived or grown up uh, where uh, actually uh, elected officials ignore. And it's very sad because they're too busy trying to do what they need to do uh, in their home with their children and, and really can't come out and be speakers to the public. So uh, I, I see it uh, going a little bit further than just one race. Thank you. So I'm just going to say, can we make sure that we have links and other ways for people to participate, um, particularly so, in the African American community, since this is so really affecting again, uh, we, we're going to minority have women. Again, we're going to have conversations, public conversations. The thought was really to do two differing things. One is there is no there is no place in city government that kind of oversees this work. We have it in pockets, right? The Gender and Equity Commission does. We have the Office of of the the, the Office of, of of Neighborhood Equity. The Office of of Equity does part of it. Council does part of it. Um, the other city authorities all do part of it. But there's no there's no one place, right? right. So I, the whole idea is to bring together at least some. Um, experts, leaders to come together and overarchingly have some conversations, but then link to individual community-based organizations and individual people so that there is a, a structure. And we have not fleshed out the structure, honestly. We're mm -hmm. working on that now. And I'd like, I'd like your help with that because, you know, you and I chat offline, you know, we and I chat about um, shared experiences. I think, I, think, I think two things are true. I don't want to be emotional, but my father bought his house in 1957. He bought his house in Homewood because it's the only place he could buy a house. The banks would not give him a mortgage, even though he was, he was, he was, he was working every day, he had two children, he had a good job, stable job. He could not get the banks to give him a mortgage. The only place he could buy a house was in Homewood. And the only reason he could buy a house in Homewood is because the person who owned the house herself fitted the mortgage, right? That the, the banks weren't involved. He had a little book and he sent her a check every month, right? And so in my house, we lived on the first floor in four rooms. It was the living room, my parents' bedroom, my, me and brother shared half of a room because there was a petition so you could walk through and get to the kitchen. I grew up there until I was in eighth and ninth grade. Then we had a family on the second floor that lived there. We had an apartment on the third floor, bachelor apartment. So we had two families that lived with us. That's how they paid the mortgage, right? So he bought it in 1957 for, I believe it was $15,000, right? In 1957, my father bought a house for, I, I, I think, 30 years, right? And he made the, he never missed a payment, right? Never missed a payment, paid it off, house in Homewood. When he died, he, my father died a few years ago. Um, a couple years before he died, it is a, it is a five bedroom, three bathroom, two kitchen house in Homewood. 
Um, and a few years before he died, when it was still in great repair, they offered him $18,000 for it. He paid $15,000 for it in 1957, and somewhere around 2005, they offered him you know, a few thousand dollars more than he paid for it. If, he, if that same house had been in Carrick, in Beachview, let alone Point Breeze, Shadyside, Southside Flats, you know, that same house would have been $350,000, $400,000. Those structures of discrimination and of redlining that none of us were a party to, but happened in 1938 and 1942 and 1955, up until 1968 probably, those, those structures forced African Americans not to get intergenerational wealth, right? That's $350,000 or $500,000 that my father couldn't pass on to me and my brother or to me and my children, right? And he, he cried about that. He said, I did everything right. I did everything right. I raised my kids. I was never in jail. And we talked about that toward the end of his life. He said, I, I don't understand. I did everything right, yet I, I, I paid off a house. And when your mother died, there was nothing for me to do with it, right? You know, and so that's, an ex that's a personal example, right? But I've lived this. I've, I've lived these things. I understand, although I rarely talk about it. I do understand because I think it's not helpful. It's simply talking about our past pain. We all had pain, right? We've all had, had in various ways, pain. I try, to I try to focus on how do we go forward together, right? How can we, how can we as African Americans, Jewish, Catholic, Muslim, men, women, how do we to come together? Middle in, Eastern women. Middle Eastern women. How do we, you know, how do we move, how do we move this, how do we move, move the needle forward? So, um, and the work is hard, right? It's uncomfortable having these conversations are hard. I, I, I don't want to push back too hard, but being poor is not the same as being African American. Because being African American usually is being African American and poor, right? That's the, that's the majority experience. 70% of African Americans in Pittsburgh are poor. And, you know, being poor is bad. But being African American and poor is quadruple bad. It, it's not the same experience. Because, in part, because the, the neighborhoods are not the same. If you're poor and black, you live in a poor black, probably, you live in a poor black neighborhood. If you're poor and not black, you tend not to live in a poor, in a poor area. So you're not, you know, you're not, you don't worry about getting, your kids getting shot when they leave the house. Every day, my kids went out the house. I had to worry that my sons may come home shot every day. Every day because some of my kids didn't come home. They were shot. Not the same. Not the same. So, so anyway, um, those are my kids in the church. Um, so my point is that it is, a, it is a difficult conversation, but that report says we have to have the conversation today, this is the time to have the conversation, to work together, to change the structure to the extent we can, to provide resources, change the structure of our city so that everybody has the, I think we're a great city, I think we're great people, let's work together to make Pittsburgh a livable city for everybody. I'll stop talking. I just want to say I'm, I'm glad that you put this forward. I'm glad we're having the conversation. I, it's actually past time to have the conversation. I just want to make sure whatever we do, it's not the same things that we've done in the past. You yeah. know, I've had concerns we're with together. the park program. I've had concerns with other things. I want to make sure what we're doing is actually going to yield change and, and, and to benefit the, the, the people of Pittsburgh. Uh, Ms. Ms., Ms., Ms. Ms. Strasberger. Thank you. Uh, my mind just Thank goes to picking up on um, one of the last things you said or one of the later things you said, Rev, was um, that we all need to be in this together. And like me, the majority of people that I represent in the district I represent feel, agree that racism is a public health crisis and that um, they understand what microaggressions mean and what they can do to a person's psyche. And, and, and ongoing trauma um, because of racism in this city, in this country, and we're saddened but not shocked to read the Gender Equity Commission report and want to, and I think are, are, are frustrated by an inability to effectuate change on this issue, want to do more, 
want to be part of um, the effort and the action. And, um, and so that's where my mind goes. How can we um, utilize the skills and the time and the talents and the money, and the resources from the district that I represent, not to speak for anyone f uh, facing racism, but to amplify and to support um, any kind of efforts like these? Because I know that, I know that the, the desire is there. I know for a fact the desire is there. And um, I'm willing to do what it takes to make sure that, that the folks that I represent are um, are there to help and there to assist in any way possible because because they want to be they want to be in this fight as as do I. Um, Mr. Cocky, I'm not come back second round with Ms. Harris. Thank you, <clears throat> and Rev. I want to commend you for the for the work that you do for the for your community uh, on this. And I also want to throw a shout out to Kelly. She's been sitting here observing us for weeks and weeks now, and it's nice to see the fruits and the efforts that you put into this, Kelly. Um, I'll just give you my own perspective. You know, I grew up in Beachview, Beachview, Brookline area. Uh, I don't know the statistics. We're probably 80% plus white kids, you know. I'm a big proponent on the segregation. When they combined Beachview, Brookline with the Hill District and Hazelwood and sent us to Brashear High School, which happens to be in Beachview, um, you know, I'm not going to say that the people in my neighborhood, there wasn't racism on that team. I could tell you that. But... What I saw over four years in, you know, particularly on the football team, I, I, I stress too, because uh, it's like going to war with, you know, these, my brothers from the Hill District and Hazelwood. And we got close through four years, you know? And I remember in particular, 1982, um, it was already determined us and Westinghouse were gonna go play in the city championship, okay? Our records, you know, we, but we had one regular season game left at Westinghouse, okay? so. We got there, and, and I tell you, back then, I don't know if it's like this today, but there must have been 3,000 people there, okay? They were lined up, and they wanted to razz us, no doubt about it, you know? <laughs> but I remember in particular getting off that bus, and my friends from the Hill District and Hazelwood and other parts of the city as well, but majority, that's where the African-American population came from, uh, surrounded us as we walked into that field. And to this day, I asked Councilwoman, Councilman Lavelle about some of my old friends, after high school, we kind of all went our separate ways, and I, I don't see and converse with them much. But uh, yeah, I'll never forget. You know, um, just that's just one little lesson. I mean, you know, so many things. So I'm a big proponent of bringing inner city kids together. It formed relationships and friendships throughout my life. I still keep in touch with some of them, not most of them. And you know, I get that perspective also. People, uh, a lot of Vietnam veterans that that yeah. I know who yeah. uh, went to war with each other and. You know what? There is no racism. To me, there was no racism in sports. Um, not like that for everybody, but because we were fighting on the same team. So uh, I look forward to helping you in any way I can. Appreciate I think it. I have some experience in this, just Appreciate being from a predominantly white neighborhood and, yeah. you know, um, different perspective. So yeah, thank you thanks very for much. Your work. Thank you very much. Ms. Harris. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, you can't leave women out of this. Uh, and as you, I grew up very poor. I think we caught a house for three or four thousand dollars. No furnace, never had a furnace till I got married. Uh, living down alone in one area with one neighbor. So uh, the poor kids had the same type of problem. And uh, if it wasn't someone being shot, it was drugs that killed them. So I just want to keep in mind, uh, in particular, uh, battered wives that live in, in a lot of those situations. And uh, go through <coughs> sheriff sales and everything. Rev, can I just finish uh, part of what I was saying? If you're done, Councilwoman. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to add, 
I was a lot of nervous members on my team that day, and we, we lost that game, but we went on to win the city championship. <laughs> <laughs> the good, 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 good in, right? What yeah. year was that? 82. So we will, we will uh, thank you for your indulgence to have this conversation. I'm going to ask for a motion to hold for a uh, cable cast post agenda and public hearing in, or town hall, some, I don't know what we'll call it, but it'll be some version of that, which, is that okay? And uh, Councilman Lavelle, I'll work all members to figure this out, to have a, I'm thinking about having a meeting in the community, really, um, but we'll talk about that um, as, as to what's the best way to, to move like forward. I'd like all of us to have meetings. Oh, uh, or, or a series of meetings. We'll, we'll talk about what that looks like. That move. May I finish? I need a motion. Need a motion. I'm going to need a motion. motion. Huh? Wait, wait. Ms. Yeah. Um, since Anthony broke in to my conversation, I think he was doing I a just want to. No, he wasn't doing me a favor. I just wanted to say that we thought we were going to do a lot with that $10 million, but it seems like the money has gone into the same areas. Nothing has branched out to bring people together, uh, which I thought was supposed to happen. It's always in the same little pockets. Mm. Well, I think I think we will have longer conversations about the housing opportunity fund. I think uh, some of us have had those conversations. Certainly, Councilman Smith and I have had that conversation. Councilman Lavelle and I have had that conversation. I do think we have to have a conversation about the proper use of that investment and how to best leverage it. And we'll have that conversation, I think, uh, robustly over the next year. It so just, I need motion to hold. Public it just here. seems right. like that. Sounds like everybody's in a hurry here, uh, but never mind. I'll wait until we have the post agenda where we can. Mr. Carter. Speak. Okay. Motion to hold for a public hearing and post agenda. Second. All those in favor, Kevin Cast. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Posers and nay. Thank you very much, little council. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Um, that brings us, I believe, to page fourteen. My hands don't move too fast. Um, Land Use and Economic Development Committee, Mrs. Gross is the chair. Bill 1951, ordinance amending the Pittsburgh Code, Title IX Zone in Article I, by changing from P Parks to EMI, Educational Medical Institutional, one parcel near the intersection of Few Street and Hammerslaw Drive in the Allegheny County Block and Lot System. Need a motion? Motion to approve. Need a second? Second. second. Any conversation, Ms. Harris? Yeah, I thought. Oh, it was held already. Okay. Yep. So the a public, public hearing was held. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Next bill, please. Bill 1952, resolution approving an updated institutional master plan under the Pittsburgh Code Title IX Zone in Article II for Carnegie Mellon University no. institutional master plan dated July 30th, 2019 on property zone EMI educational medical institution district 14 ward council district eight. Need a motion, motion a public to, hearing was held. Motion to approve. Need a second. second. Any conversation? In, Ms. Harris, I see your hand. I was second. Second, any other conversation? No conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. That takes us to the Innovation, Performance, and Assets Management Committee. Mrs. Strasberger is the chair. Bill 2234, resolution further amending resolution number 479, authorizing the mayor and director of permit license and inspections and the director of city planning and the chief of innovation and performance to enter into a professional services agreement with Building I, Inc to purchase software and related support services mm. that will create an interactive map for internal and public visual display of planning, permit, license, and violation data in order to correct a JDE account number. I need a motion, Ms. Strasburger. Motion to approve. I need a second. 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 Any conversation, Ms. Strasburger? Self-evident. Self All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers, nay. They have a deferred paper. Bill 2177. Resolution amending resolution 662, authorizing the mayor and director of innovation and performance to enter into an agreement with Kerasoft Technology Corporation for Hootsuite Enterprise Social Relationship Platform to better manage the city's online constituent service efforts with an annual cost of the agreement not to exceed $104,950.45. Need a motion, Ms. Strasburger? Motion to approve. Need a second. Brief discussion. Second. We've had 
Further conversation, all those in favor? Sig brief discussion. You, you brief, I'm sorry. I just, just wanted to say that I did um, have a good conversation with IMP and um, essentially, you know, we did have this conversation last week. Essentially, um, you know, we approved it as council. We, um, a, a, a contract was never um, executed. Um, I feel very confident that we now have the personnel, the director, um, the deputy director, the assistant director in place to, to ensure that this never happens again. So um, I feel very comfortable passing this not to exceed amount that could very well be negotiated down by our law department throughout the uh, ensuing weeks and months. But um, basically, we need to pay for the services that we used. So um, I, I would recommend passing this today. Any other conversation? Ms. I'm Sm just going to say I'm Smith. voting no today because I still feel the same as I did last week that the, we should not be paying for something that did not have a contract in place. I understand that there was issues with personnel. Um, that's not the public's responsibility, and that's not their fault, and this is their dollars. And I, and I feel like, you know, we've taken a lot of lawsuits for a lot of things, and this is one that we didn't have a contract for. Yes, we received the services, but I don't know that we would lose that, that, law, that lawsuit. So I, I just feel like we have to make a stand, because if we do this once, we're gonna, it's gonna be something else down the road, and another one, and I'm so, for those reasons, um, I'm gonna vote no. Any other conversation? Ms. Harris? Ditto. Pardon me? Ditto to what? Any other conversation? Mr. Coggio? Yeah, I would like to say, uh, being that we received these services, we have to pay them. I, I just feel, you know, strongly about that. So well, uh, I think that magazine. Councilwoman Strasburger explained to me yesterday that, you know, you know, checks and balances are in place, and I don't think it's going to happen again. But I don't think it's right that it happened that way. Uh, in the future, I hope we don't, you know, extend contracts without anything in writing, I guess, is what it really comes down to. So um, so I say we pay our bill and uh, make sure it doesn't happen again. Any other conversation? See no conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed to nay. Next no. bill. No. Two news. I'm sorry. Two news. Thank you very much. That takes us to a uh, new paper. Bill 2210. Resolution providing for a professional services agreement with Mansfield Ore Company for fuel card management and system implementation services and providing for the payment thereof at a cost not to exceed $48,985. Need a motion. All right, motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? No conversation. Missed conversation with Ms. Harris. Rates higher. Higher and higher. Huh? <laughs> get those cards like at auctions. Good morning. Good morning. So back there all that time oh, waiting. I so okay. I, I just couldn't but yeah. Just leave. Jennifer Olzinger, Assistant Director for Procurement in the Office of Management and Budget. Brandon Walton, Fleet Services Manager, Office of Management and Budget. Okay. Well tell me a little bit about this. Um, so we are going to be replacing um, two of the city's existing systems. One is our fuel master system that um, monitors uh, the fuel uh, at our stations, at our islands, the city-owned islands. Um, it is the control mechanism to make sure that um, it is only city people being in there. Um, and it is also replacing our uh, current contract with Wright Express for our non um, city-owned uh, fuel stations where uh, the public safety officials need to go on off hours when those aren't open. Um, this particular system has an option for retail and non-retail cards, so we will now have one system, uh, one card per vehicle. We don't have to use two different systems. Um, there's not going to be any maintenance involved for our staff. This company will be doing it all for us. Um, it is replacing um, two systems that really didn't work. The current fuel master system that we had uh, was always down. Um, I'm sure if those of you are familiar, we were putting fuel rings in each of the card to automatically um, you know, read those devices and everything. It was constantly down, constantly breaking, costing us a lot of money, and leaving our fuel uh, locations um, you know, on manual a lot of times uh, because of that. So we were losing uh, mileage data. We were missing pe preventative maintenance on uh, vehicles, which is, you know, critical. So, um, and so not only will we uh, be replacing two systems that um, have not served us well in the past, we are going to be saving $120,000 uh, in the first three years of the contract for the city. Will so. there be um, anything sort of like a charge card shows what the name is yep. and the vehicle? Exactly. 
Okay. Yeah, and then each. it'll say, it'll come out with a report of how many miles you've went or how mm -hmm. much the fuel was. Yeah, all of that. And that will be there <laughs> for <laughs> every everyone that is using a city vehicle. Okay, so then yeah. we'll have that information, correct? We will, and it will be uh, more dependable. It will all be in one database instead of having to pull that from two and three like we do now. Um, so it, it'll be a much, uh, there's a lot more controls and options in this software as well than we have had in the past uh, that we can implement, um, you know, depending on the needs of the city. So does that mean that public works could go out also and use that card at stations only city owned stations we only have one city owned station we actually have five fuel islands oh do we know we do where are they brandon <laughs> we have one at we, uh, yeah. we have one at uh riverview park um one over at herschel fields uh one um it's the fifth division um that's how it works yeah Hers um there, so there, yeah, there's one at each of the public works divisions, um, and there will be one back at the fourth division once it's back up. And then we also have one at Brilliant Yard uh, with PWSA. Okay, so you have, um, we don't have one down. And one at the city garage yeah. as well. Oh, okay. Yep. That's the main So that's it's a main. total of? It's a total, it'll be a total of six once um, the fourth division's back up. It's a total of five right now. Okay, okay. I, I don't get that math. It seems like you have more than five right now. But then there's one more you have to add because you have it at all the divisions and then you named other areas that you have them. First, second, fifth, Brilliant Yard, and 29th Street. That's five, and then the fourth fourth division will be the sixth one. Okay, I could have swore you just said a couple other ones too. Oh. Yeah, Herschel is. Yeah, Herschel is. is. Okay. Thank you. Any other conversation before I vote? A quick question. So this would this system is not car dependent. It's car dependent. That is correct. Right. It doesn't. You don't have to have anything. The car doesn't have to be outfitted in any special way. No. It's, so the responsibility is on the card holder. Correct. And I just wanted to thank you for your work. You've been very kind to me. The times that I've. Um, participate in using city vehicles you've just been exemplary and so i just want to thank you for your service to the city um, yes why now in 2019 why not before 2019 that's a good question <laughs> um new people in charge uh i guess is, is the probably the best answer to that um in just repeated frustrations um, <coughs> over the past years you know it, they it, they weren't as faulty in the past several years as they have been in the past year um, we also are having problems with the fuel rings uh drawing too much batteries um, things like that we, that we did not predict when you know the the staff that were before us chose those fuel rings um you know we didn't they did not foresee a lot of the a lot of those issues that um, they didn't necessarily. Well, the, the drawing of the batteries and then so then they have a car that's down. They got to replace a battery. So there's those hidden costs. We're downtime on vehicles. So not using those fuel rings anymore is really going to help us out. And we are now out of both of those previous contracts that we were in. So this was our our time where we were out of contract and able to evaluate our new options. And we did an RFP process for this. Okay. Just seems a long time. Thank you. When would be implement? How long would it take to implement? <clears throat> We're in the process of implementing now. Once we have uh, full approval, it should only be uh, six to eight weeks. Okay, fast. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Any other conversation? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. Um, thank, thank you very much. Positive recommendation. That takes us to the last committee of the day and the last bill of the day. Intergovernment Affairs Committee. Mr. Connor is the chair. We have a new paper. Bill 2206, resolution adopting you, plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official <clears throat> sewer facilities plan for the 2330 Penn Avenue condominiums, 2330 Penn Avenue. Eight. Motion to hold two weeks. Second. Any other conversation? No aye. other conversation? Oh, <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposes nay. It's been a long meeting. 
A couple of announcements this afternoon at 12 o'clock, Council will meet for an executive session on Bill 2175 as it relates to the Simiclair Street in the 26th Ward of the City of Pittsburgh. Also this afternoon at 1.30, Council will hold a cable class public hearing on Bills 1977, 1994, those were good years, as they relate to the naming of Stratomore Park and the Larmer Avenue Basketball Court, respectively. Tomorrow, Thursday, October 31st, uh, Council will hold a briefing with sessions beginning 1.30 p.m. and 2 o'clock related to Domi fee schedule change. Also, due to the general election next week, Council's regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, November 4th at 10 a.m., and the Standing Committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, November 6th at 10 a.m. No meetings are scheduled on Tuesday, November 5th. I need a motion to excuse the absent member, approve the minutes, and adjourn the meeting. Whoa. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading off the paper. I know. I keep going through you, Ms. Harris. It's been that kind of morning. How can I help? Yes. Uh, I just want to say last night on the news, um, they had the, the city of Pittsburgh lost in court with a gun issue. And uh, I can't understand why we would spend taxpayers' dollars to try to go for the same piece of legislation, in particular because the Uniform Firearm Act, and, the, and it's state and federal. And, and that's what three of us said at this table, uh, Councilwoman Smith and Councilman Coghill and myself, that again, this was another law that we could not, uh, we could not vote on uh, because it says uh, that no county, no municipality, no township can regulate uh, any ownership or transfer of any or, of any or ammunition. Um, and it, it just goes on uh, that we can't ban uh, assault weapons or um, any physical boundaries. We can't do anything with gun legislation. And what we could have done that would have been more effective is to go to the state and lobby for legislation because, you know, that they are the people. We are not the state legislator, as I said before. Uh, and, and you also have said before, we can't. Uh, pass any gun legislation and to take this any further in court is going to cost the taxpayers and I really would like to find out uh, Ms. Clark Okay, that, that the city's using pro bono attorneys right now. Well, Eric is going to respond because I don't want to give him Okay, okay, yeah, I'd like to hear from Erica on that uh, because you know Joe James was right uh, in saying that we could not do what the legislation said we could do, and to take it any further. Uh, is going to come out with the same outcome. We can't do it. We can't expect our police officers to try to take weapons or any of that. Now, if we went to the state legisla legislators, the General Assembly, and said, you know, this is what we want, this is what we care about, that would have been a different story for us to lobby. Uh, the state because it's a state law and I don't I don't believe everyone out there understands that we are the city we are not the state and we are not the federal government thank you very much Mr. Strasburg followed by Mr. Connor 
I was not going to comment on this, but I have. Um, I feel the need to to respond, and. Um, Although uh, Councilwoman Harris and I get along very well, there are issues that we disagree on, and this is one of them. First, I do want to clarify that we are not expending taxpayer dollars on legal assistance in this. Um, we have a number of attorneys from around the city, around the state, and other states who are helping, helping our law department represent it, and representing us pro bono. So taxpayer dollars not being used uh, outside of our law department. They are being used. I. Um, I, very gr I have a great amount of respect for Judge James, um, but we um, were expecting an appeal either from the city or from our opposing counsel, and uh, expecting some sort of an appeal up through the courts until it reaches the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. So that should not come as a surprise to anyone. Um, if, we had, if we had prevailed yesterday, the other side would have appealed. Um, the other side appeal, uh, prevailed, we will appeal. Um, this f is going to be a long fight, and I'm in it for the long haul. This is going to be the fight of my career. I've said that before. Um, and I think that we owe it to the people who have um, experienced gun violence in their entire lives, who live in neighborhoods that experience gun violence, that to the people, to our children who are doing lockdown drills every month in their schools, to the families of the 11 victims who were shot in a synagogue just about a year ago um, in my district, to the people who have lost their lives to gun violence, totaling about 39,000 a year, enough to fill PNC Park and to the people who have, have lost loved ones to, to gun-related suicide. So um, we have to continue the fight. It cannot end here. In my mind, it's not ending here. And um, yes, there are a number of bills that are, have been proposed at the state level. And to all of my council colleagues, especially those who did not support the firearms ordinances, which, for the record, I do believe were written in such a way that do have a, a good chance in court, um, I urge you to join me for a day of action that is yet to be planned, but that I know Representative Ed Ganey and others, Representative Frankel, are planning to lobby the chair of the Judiciary Committee to actually let those bills see the light of day and actually be voted on on the floor in the House because they're being held up in committee. So for those who would like to lobby in Harrisburg, please join me when that is, when that is planned because we need the collective voice of counsel and all of your support to make that to make that happen, along with those who would like to see statewide gun legislation pass, um, and have been trying for, for years and years and years. I am not optimistic, but I'm hopeful, eternally hopeful, that we are part of an effort across the country, in cities and in states all across the country, to build a groundswell of support around common sense gun legislation. Um, that it's not going to be immediately effective in, in Congress. There's inaction in Congress and at the federal level right now, but we're part of a groundswell, and, and we see the momentum that is building. And it's just like any other issue. Um, cities and states will be the first to, to, to act and su succeed, and eventually it'll get up to the federal level. But we have to keep working at it. So um, I'm grateful for my colleagues' support, if not on the legislation, for the spirit of the, of, the, of the intention of the legislation and um, for the mayor's support as well. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mr. O'Connor. Yeah, I wasn't going to comment either. Councilman Strasburg said it great that, you know, a lot of this work is pro bono. It's not costing us any money. But if we don't stand up and fight like this council did two years ago, 40,000 people in the city of Pittsburgh would not now have paid sick leave. And we fight the fights that we know are the right fights to have. And yeah, this is going to be a five or six year battle, but the cowards at the state level and the cowards at the federal level are never going to do it. And they keep pushing bills back. Yes, we have support on a lot of our colleagues that we know at the state level support what we're doing. But there are cowards out there that don't want to take a stand against violence. And this is not only against mass shootings with bills that were introduced by uh, Reverend Burgess as well as Councilman Lavelle. It's talking about daily violence and it's gun violence, and it's disgusting that we sit here and we keep fighting, and these 
ridiculous organizations and these cowards that we elect statewide and in federal positions won't stand up and do the right thing for their rep for the people that they represent and their constituents because as councilwoman strasburger said the average person or the, the i would I wouldn't say the average person but the polls that you're seeing across the country are in the 75 percent to 80 percent range that you need some type of gun control <clears throat> it is disgusting that people are actually saying that we should not be doing something like this. We absolutely should be doing it, and more communities should be doing it, and more cities should be doing it, and they will be doing it. And I just think that this is a very long fight, and everybody at this table was very supportive of the conversation. I'm not saying anybody here, you know, if you voted for it, you voted for it. If you didn't, you didn't. We, su we all support each other. We understand everybody's background and how they voted. That's perfectly fine. but for us to sit back and not continue to fight, then there's something wrong with us. But we are going to continue to fight, and I don't care what that judge says, and I don't care what those other organizations say. It's the right thing to do, and we're elected to do the right thing. And I will challenge the cowards in Harrisburg and in D.C. to finally stand up and do the right thing. It's about time. I don't want to get a fine. So I just, I'm gonna step out, but thank you. Thank you very much. Any other conversation, Ms. Gross? Proud to serve with you both, Councilwoman Strasburger and Councilman O'Connor, and I, I would be happy to join you in Harrisburg, and I'll support you all the way. Thank you. So of course, I stand with uh, Councilman Strasburg, Councilman O'Connor. Um, there are some fights that are moral and just. We're really not talking about the law. We're talking about justice. And so whether it's homicides, suicides, uh, mass killings or domestic violence, all of those acts of violence by guns is intolerable and has no place for civilized society. So I stand, I stand with them and I thank them for their leadership and their great compassion. Um, second round with uh, Councilwoman Harris. And I have no problem helping and going to the state because it's state legislation uh, to lobby the state now that we're twisting it about the state. Um, but this council had no right trying to be a state representative and pass legislation that, that clearly says the Pennsylvania Constitution requires that the home rule charter municipalities may not perform any power denied by the General Assembly. Uh, and that is for any and all municipalities to give regulations, uh, ownership, possession, transfer or possession of firearms, uh, or attempt to regulate. And that is exactly what this council was doing. That is why Anthony, uh, Councilwoman uh, Smith, and myself voted no, because we know that bill cannot be passed here at the city level as council. Now to go to the state and to lobby for a change in the gun legislation is totally different. And I am happy, and I'm sure my colleagues, Anthony and, and Councilwoman Smith, would be happy to. I mean, talking about how many people, no, this should not have happened in a synagogue, should not happen in a church, should not happen anywhere. And I am the second. Councilman Burgess is the first of having children and people killed in our district. So yes, I'm 100% 
asking the right party, which is the state, to vote on this legislation. But to spend money, and even if we have people that are doing it pro bono, we are paying our attorneys, the city attorneys. So there is money going into this. But you can go as far as you want with a piece of legislation that was at this table. And it's not going nowhere uh, because it can't be done at the city level. But we can go and lobby the state and the federal government to do something uh, so this nonsense stops. I mean, if they're not going to do anything, then they need a stricter policy or laws that have to do with the people that have used a gun or a knife or anything else to kill someone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Caulkill. For a lot of those same reasons, as Councilwoman Harris said, is why I didn't support the bills. But, uh, but I just want to say, you know, publicly, Erica, you and Corey, I really, really admire your passion for what you're doing. I really do. And I do believe in some sense of gun control, you know. And I think Councilman O'Connor said it best when we were discussing this, that nobody at this table doesn't believe in some sort of sense of gun control. For me, AR-15s and these weapons of war should be taken off the street. And there should be highly restricted as to who can own them. And, you know, so... Um, I think the most encouraging thing that I see in this battle that, you know, it's hard, you know, to get any traction at the state level, as, as you both so put it, but uh, I love what Dick's Sporting Goods are doing, you know? Dick's Sporting Goods, they're taking, uh, the, you know, these killing machines, same time leaving the hunting rifles and the things that, you know, that I grew up with, um, you know, so I think it's very encouraging when you see private business who are actually the ones who are putting these selling them in their stores and getting them on the street. If they restrict them, then we don't have to worry about the state level. But uh, it's very complicated, though. And uh, I just wanted to say, you know, thanks for your efforts and what you're doing. Any other conversation? Seeing no conversation, I will now ask for the motion to excuse the absent minute member, approve the minutes, and adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.